What are you thinking? Water wise. Uh, medium rare. <laughs> 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 Put a, I put your color into consideration. Well, I see now, it's, now it feels like a sauna. Yeah, I was like, damn, man. I want to keep my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> Not well done. <laughs> yeah, like I usually try to get the, the hydrating shampoo and conditioner. Cause most clients, you know, they 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 only use shampoo to wash their hair for some reason. Like there's not a lot of them that actually go with the conditioner and shampoo. Oh yeah. And hydrating shampoo is just yeah. Good hey, it's funny, I know a lot of people that just use like, they're like, oh, like what do you use for your hair? Oh, just some head and shoulders. Yeah, or, some, <laughs> or the bar soap, you know, they use it on their head too. Like. <laughs> and they realize why, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, why my shit so fucking dry? Well, that's why I play it. I feel like I'm thinning, uh, dude, what are you using on your hair? Well, you don't realize that um, head and shoulders is for like dry scalp and stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to be using that every day. Like me, one day uh, we ran out of soap at uh, my mom's house, and I fucking used Dawn to wash my shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> the dish, the dish soap? Hmm? The dish soap? Yeah, like the Dawn Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> and Dawn Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> if it's good enough for ducks, it's good enough for me. <laughs> I just want to see how. Yeah, I think now I can connect it better. What I see. And if you need some reference, man, there's this guy named uh, Eric the Barber on YouTube. <laughs> he gets down, and you should watch some of his videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, make sure you record this so I can know how to cut his hair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting on that conversation. I'm still waiting for that conversation to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we got what brought you to be a barber? Necessity. That's. So my parents couldn't really afford a, a haircut. Yeah. Imagine being uh, the oldest of seven, four brothers, you know, trying to get a haircut every other week or every month. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll be cost, costly for, for my parents. Mm hmm. So one day my dad went to uh, the yard sales. Mm -hmm. He came back with a 76er. I think he had like like two guards or or two blades. Yeah. And I started just buzzing my hair down. <laughs> so how old would you say you were at that time? I think I must have been like around 14, 15. Oh, dang. Then my mom saw that I was cutting my own hair. I was like, well, since you're cutting your own hair, you might as well start with your brothers. Yeah. Man, some of my brothers didn't like haircuts. Uh -huh. They will run. Uh, one of them, I'll even have to tie him to a pole. <laughs> his freaking hair. No. And if you're watching this, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You got to tie him to a pole? <laughs> tie him to a pole. Because my mom will be like, man, he looks like a microphone. You need to cut that dude's hair. Then another one of my brothers, he always looked like he was wearing a hat. Like what you were doing before you were a barber. Because you said at 14 was when you got your first clippers. Oh, man. But, I mean, the 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 what got you to here, you know? Okay. Yeah, so uh, I always did odd jobs. Like, I didn't finish high school. Um, as you could see, I could barely speak English. So I really didn't have a lot of experience. So I really didn't have... I don't know, I guess I didn't have no goals in life. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like, I was, I guess I would consider myself a floater. If uh, I got a call back from a job that I applied, you know, I was there for the interview and I was crossing my fingers hoping that I would get picked up. So I, man, if I go down my, my resume, I've been a painter, I've been a uh, yeah, I'm a forklift driver. I've been uh, a cook at a restaurant. Oh, dang, you even know how to chef it up? Yup. 
I go cook a nice little burrito for you, thanks to the green burrito. <laughs> you know, so so during, during this time, were you also cutting hair? You know what? I always, uh, ever since my dad uh, came back with those clippers, I always seem to have like a pair with me. Like I had like my little kid and because uh, I always just continue cutting my own hair. And awesome. once in a while, you know, some friends or, or acquaintance will want me to bust their hair down. I wasn't doing anything fancy back then, you know, not, not like now. My little buzz cuts. That was my, my expertise right there, buzz cuts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so all this time it just just floating from job to job. And every time I would move to a different job, it was because I was either getting a raise or I was already fed up with with management. Like I always felt like I that wasn't for me. Like like there was something else in life that was a story. yeah. Like I remember growing up and I used to always uh, say to myself like there has to be more to life than fucking waking up and dealing with this fucking assholes. You know, at, at whatever job I was at, for some reason, management, I was fucking suck. Yeah. Damn, blur that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I had a little bit of a uh, baby mama drama. I ended up moving uh, to Monterey from uh, LA County. Uh-huh. And here, man, like, in in the city of uh, Salinas. So I, even when you moved over here, you still weren't, weren't... I still wasn't a barber. Okay. okay. You know, I guess I'll, I'll consider myself a hair cutter. Like, I knew how to work the shears and, you know, uh, work the clippers. But it wasn't nothing crazy, like... So it wasn't until I got laid off in this job that I had for eight years at uh, Hampton Brown. It was a book publishing company. Uh -huh. um, they laid me off and that's where I made the decision that I wanted to be a, a barber. I, I called a couple schools, some locally here and some uh, down in LA. And I was looking for some that were accredited so I could get my unemployment and oh, wow. also um, be able to do my my certification to get my barber's license. So that's how you were still going to be able to at least survive. You know? Yeah. So thanks to uh, Hampton Brown that had a, a 401k and a, a matching plan, uh, the years that I worked there, I was able to tuck away some money. And when we got laid off, we also got like a little severance package. And I made my decision then uh, that I was going to be a barber. But then one of my roommates was like, hey, let's go to Fresh Express. I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't, I don't want to work at Fresh Express. He goes, come on, dude, just, just go with me. Yeah, yeah. At the time, he, he didn't have a driver's license. Oh, so you were his. I was, I was a little chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we drove to the little, uh, you know, a little security house that they have right there in Fresh Express, and that's yeah. where they hand out the the applications. Uh -huh. <coughs> we filled them out, dropped them off. Two weeks later, I get a call for uh -huh. the interview, and I was like, "Ah, what the hell?" You know, I I got the call. Let me go see what this job is all about. When I left uh, Hampton Brown, I believe I was earning like $12.50. So when I went to the interview and they told me that I could earn $18 an hour, I was like, what? What was this at? Uh, Fresh Express. Oh, damn. So I was going from $12 to, to $18. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm, forget Barbary. You know, <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So I started going to work at Fresh Express. Uh -huh. But 14 months later, they were here talking about laying off people. And I go, not this bullshit again. Uh, what year was this around? Man, I want to say, damn. 2012, 
2011 around that time. Uh-huh. So then when uh, they laid me off, I was able to get my unemployment and I called the school down in Long Beach and they were like, yeah, man, just, we just need like 2500 as a down payment and you could start, uh, we start classes every Monday. Oh, so you were, you could have started as soon as possible. As way. soon as possible. My wife tells me now that I never told her anything, that one day I just went up to her like, we're moving to Long Beach. That she was shocked, like, what the hell? We never even talked about this. Oh, so at this point, you're, you had met your wife already, too? Yeah, I was already married, I already had uh, my daughter, and by that time, I already had my, my older son who lived over there in, uh, yeah. in Long Beach. So then, uh, I told the wife, I'm, I'm gonna go secure a place for us uh, in Long Beach, and then I'll come and pick you up. My initial plan was maybe just to stay at mom's house. Uh -huh. But I was lucky enough that one of my uh, brother's uh, wives uh, knew this guy who was renting apartments. So she put in some work for me, and I talked to the guy, and I explained to him that I was gonna be doing the, the barbering program that I was only gonna be there for that that time, which it was uh, roughly about nine months. So he agreed to it. You know, I gave him his uh, his first month, last month, and and all that good stuff. And I went and uh, registered for school. That was my first. Uh, I guess my first Tuesday. Then once I secured the apartment, I moved the wife and the daughter down to Long Beach to this crappy ass apartment, man. I, I think it was even hunted. Oh, damn. You know, no, no cable, uh, no internet. Some, yeah, it was a really bad fucking neighborhood too. And this but is in Long Beach. This is in Long Beach. So I, I did my schooling, man. I, I didn't miss a day. I think the only time I missed it was because one of my sons was doing like one of those, uh, like a little show or something at a church. Mm -hmm. So I, I left a little early that, that one time. So I was able to do my barbering uh, course for, I want to say about eight months, eight months and a half or something. And man, to my surprise, I was actually graduating from barbering school on my birthday, April 12th. Oh dang! So you made it work. Did you did you know it was gonna happen? Like you kind of tried setting it up a little bit, or no? No, it was just randomly. It just happened. Damn. According to to my calculations, I should have been done on April 11, but uh -huh. the school had another thing talking about. Oh no, you need some more hours. So I finished like halfway through the day on on April 12, uh -huh. 2013. So uh, that same day that I. Uh, Finished my, my school, I clocked out. My car was parked right in front of the school. Yeah. So I got on that thing and drove all the way to uh, Salinas. Oh, that, that day? That day. I remember one of my uh, buddies from school looked at my car and he was like, is that shit even gonna make it to Salinas? <laughs> oh, damn. And yes, I'm still driving that car too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've had a lot of, like a lot of people tell me like, hey, does he? Does he still drive that Integra, you know? Yeah, it's still there. <laughs> You're like, God damn, man. It's running, you know? Nice and strong. And... This is my investment right here. Nah, not the cars, man. Yeah, yeah, and that's one thing that I learned from you, too, you know? It's like, don't don't spend your money on something that's going to depreciate, like, to like, you know, like a vehicle. Yeah, like, right here, this, this little thing that we got going on right here, man, it's only... It's only starting. Yeah, so uh, after I got my license, oh no, should I, uh, let me rewind that a little bit more. While I was waiting for my my date so I could go take the, the test so I could get my license, uh -huh. I didn't want to forget all the stuff that I learned. So I started looking around to see if uh, I could find a place to work. Luckily, I found this place in uh, in Seaside, uh -huh. and some ladies were nice nice enough to let me work right there uh, while I waited for my date. I would go a couple hours in the afternoon, you know, 
just to keep some reps up. Yeah. Man, I was fortunate enough. I guess I study uh, enough that I was able to pass the test on the on the first try, both the practical and the uh, hands on. Oh dang! Oh, so you knew all that? You did all the state board procedures and stuff, you know? Everything. The perm, the everything, you know? Yeah, I did it at the time when we had to take like a live uh, model. Oh damn! You had a live model at the time. I had to take. Uh, I took my dad. Uh -huh. To do the shave and the haircut. Oh dang! Yeah, but now it's well, now it's mannequins, you know. Well, before. Yeah, they it just they just made it a lot easier now to get the license. But I don't know if that's making a lot better barbers or worse barbers because of that. But I think if anything, it's just making it easier to you know become one. I guess in a way become one. But I mean, at the end of the day, the clients the clients know, you know. Oh, they definitely could tell. Yeah, so the same day that I passed the test, I went back to the school because the school has a rule where they don't give you your uh, graduation certificate unless you have your license. Oh, damn. So I went, showed them my, uh, my license, and they gave me my certificate and drove back to, uh, to Guro Salinas. After that, uh, I told the wife, well, I'm going to start looking for, for a real place to work. Hmm. Uh, the place that I was working at, I asked the ladies if I could rent a chair, but they were like, nah, we don't do that here. We'd rather just uh, keep uh, stealing your money, giving you 50%. Oh. And I was like, oh, heck no. I'm not going to be doing haircuts for $6. Yeah. So I decided to leave that place. And I started looking around in uh, Salinas. Uh, I stopped by at Happy To Be Nappy. I, I stopped at a place right there by the mall where this lady gave me a fucked up haircut. But thanks to her, I was able to find this place uh, to work. Uh -huh. She told me about two places. Uh, one in the, in the Alisal. And another one down on Williams Road. Mm -hmm. I stopped at the Alice House spot first, and the lady was like, oh, let me just get your number. If uh, I just hire somebody, once I figure out their schedule, I'll give you a call. Uh -huh. I never received that call, so uh, I went to the place down on, on Williams Road, uh, this uh, salon called Genesis Beauty Salon. Uh -huh. The owner of the school had told me, but Miguel, once you get out, don't try to go to a fancy place. You need to get more reps up. Then once you feel more comfortable, then you can start looking for a, a fancier place to work. Uh -huh. So I took her advice, and that's why I ended up going to, uh, you know, Genesis Beauty Salon. Uh -huh. I met some nice people right there, and, you know, they, they guided me uh, while I was working there. And the funny thing is when I left the house, I told the wife, I go, I'm going to go look for work. And she's like, no, you need to take some time off. I go, man, what are the chances of me going out there and actually finding a job on the first day that I look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her response was like, I already know how you are. You're going to come back with a job. <laughs> uh -huh. Sure enough, went back. So what happened? I found a spot. I told you. <laughs> yes, sir. So she always believed in me, the wife. Okay, and that's, I feel like that right there is, is, is I think as, as, when you're looking for like a marriage or whatever, like a partner, them being like your biggest supporter versus like, you know, in past, let's say past relationships where they don't work out or stuff like that, you know? Yeah, like I feel like that, that's a big factor. If it wasn't for the wife, I wouldn't be able to like achieve all the things that I have achieved in, in my life. Yeah, so I worked there so for... Big, big shout out to Miguel's wife. <laughs> you know, I love you, baby. <laughs> now, I worked at Genesis Beauty Salon for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what would you say, what was the biggest output that you took out of that right there, working there? You know, being available, consistency. Um, there was times where I would show up and the owner would call me. 
hey, uh, is there anybody waiting for me? And I'll be like, oh, no, uh, the shop is uh, empty. She goes, all right, uh, I'm going to do a couple runs. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. Mm-hmm. And I never understood that, you know, like, why people do that? Like, if the business says it's 9 o'clock, you're supposed to be there, be there at 9 o'clock. Yeah. You know, so I, I learned that, you know, from somebody doing what they didn't supposed to do. But I guess it worked out for her. She's been doing it for years. Yeah. But for me, it was like, I, I can't do that. So I tried different uh, dates, thinking, uh, well, maybe Sunday is going to be busy, or maybe Tuesday is going to be busy, or Wednesday. We're putting in 10 hours. We work from 10 to uh, 8 o'clock. And man, it was some rough times. There will be times when I would just leave with one haircut, sometimes two haircuts. Man, I remember the first time I ever did over a hundred dollars. I was like, fucking want to do fucking car wheels and shit. <laughs> I think I did like, man, like 16, 17 haircuts to be able to do that amount. Oh, damn. What were you charging at the time? I think it was like 12, dollars $12 or something. Oh, damn. Like, it, it, it sounds, I guess it sounds a little petty, you know, but when you're going home with like 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 60 bucks on a regular basis, when you finally hit 100 bucks, you're just like, whoa, I made it, you know, like, yeah. I know now, you know, we could charge 100 bucks for a haircut, but at the time, you know, it's. It was like a big accomplishment for me. Man, you make sure you blow out the tears with this. Uh... <laughs> and it's crazy. Now we're, now we're, Damn. you know, tomorrow, tomorrow marks one year, you know. One year of and opening the shop. And celebrating the one year anniversary on Saturday. So how does that feel? Like knowing that from, from 14 years of age. Pick, you know, your dad coming home with those clippers to now. It took, it did take a little bit longer than expected. But do you feel like you had to go through everything you had to go through in order to be in the position? You know, my biggest regret has always been that not doing the barbering earlier. Oh, okay, okay. But then I go back to my sweet wife. She always said, like, if if you would have done barbering, probably you would have not had, um, what's the word she said? Appreciate it as much as you do now. Yeah. Now it just it it actually feels like what I think my parents attempted for our lives to be here in the U.S. Damn, I'm getting teary eyed right now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, what the hell? Making me cry over here, man. I'm wetting my face. <laughs> you know, I, I really do feel like. I'm living the American dream, you know, like. Oh, you didn't, you didn't, you haven't said that you came here at the age of 10. Yeah, you see, I, I, I'm an immigrant. Like, born in Mexico, uh, was brought over here at the age of 10. Of course, I couldn't speak English. As you could tell, I can barely speak English now. <laughs> nah, I feel like you're pretty fluent, you know. But, I mean, that that's years of, you know. Learning and uh, yeah, just hanging out, listening to Easy, you know, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm an immigrant. I'm a high school dropout, but I do love to read. At one point, I gotta say it was a lot of those love, uh, love books or whatever. <laughs> Even the Kama Sutra once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Self-developing uh, books. What side do you come into? I come into the, this side. Oh, yeah. this side, huh? Yeah. yeah. So my goal is to perfect his haircut so that he can be fresh every week. Every week. You know? And I like that. That's, every, that's every, every you know, because I feel like I haven't been able to get the reps in that much, as much as we wanted. But I'm, I'm going to get this right right here. Oh, I know you are. 
Uh, I never had a doubt with it. I already feel good just looking at the tape with like, man. But that that's why that's why I appreciate when you tell me like, hey, let's do this a little different or you know? Uh, let's go to back to Miguel's um where he almost cried scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there there are a few people out there that that I gotta say thank you to, you know, like that have helped me uh, grow as far as my career. Uh, I want to first mention, uh, obviously, the, the first person that I ever worked with, it was uh, Genesis Beauty Salon. Uh -huh. I mean, the ladies at, at Seaside, too, for, you know, giving me a shot. But right now, I can't remember their names and my life depended on it. Yeah. So I'm not going to mention them. But you know who you are, if you see this video. I am grateful for them. I, I'm grateful for Valeria. She, uh, you know, she gave me a, a spot. She, uh, she helped me grow right there at that beauty salon. She even taught me how to cut a girl's hair, yeah. color her hair, perms, you know, we so did all that. At one point you were doing perms and stuff like that? I could not? do perms, yeah. Damn. It's because of, of the barbering school. Yeah. But watching it at the, at the beauty salon, you know, it's just like, see how, how it's done live without, you know, doing it like we did it at school. With yeah. no no chemical none of that stuff, and then you know I got the the girl Lulu. Yeah. She also helped me out a lot too. And I gotta say, Danny, uh, for taking me to Privilege Barber Shop, and you know I actually uh, got my my feet wet for the first time at an actual barber shop. So how's that? How'd you meet? How'd you meet Danny? Danny actually worked with us at Genesis Beauty Salon for a little bit oh. before he got his license. Oh, okay, okay. You know, and once he uh, he left, uh, he would go uh, and get a haircut from me. Oh, okay, okay. And one day I told him, I go, man, I kind of regret not, not leaving with you. I go, if a chair ever becomes available, man, let me know. And sure enough, man, that, that day came and so I ended up going to to Privilege Barber Shop, where I'm, uh, Cookie gave me a shot over there, and I gotta say that a lot of the customer service that I have now is because of them. Mm -hmm. Like there was times when Just I get fucking they. yeah, like I'll get jumpy on customers, you know, for being late. Like yeah. I was fucking really anal about stuff like that, and this guy would pull me to the side. Hey, you need to come your ass down. You know, you can't be treating customers like that. Yeah. So, you know, they, they made me see and realize uh, things that I wasn't seeing. So I'm always going to be grateful to those guys, you know, for, uh, for I guess, taking me under their wing, you know, and, like, teaching me other stuff that, obviously, I couldn't learn on my own. Yeah. And, of course, haircutting, you know, like, uh, I always use this analogy where a guy was the fastest guy in a, in a city, and he would always beat everybody at running. So what you did, he moved to a bigger city, but he wasn't uh, the fastest uh, any longer. But guess what happened to his timing? It got better. It got better. So that's how I felt, you know, like, I felt like I was a badass at the salon. But once I uh, was around other badasses, you know, like, it humbles you down. Yeah. Like, and, you know, so I'm always going to be grateful to those guys, man, like. Shout out to Privilege Barbershop. Uh, yes, sir. Genesis Beauty Salon. Other clients who put up with my shit. <laughs> when I didn't know how to act. <laughs> Damn, I'm looking young. <laughs> That's our goal right there. Te quiero quitar unos, eh, unos 10 years real quick. There you go. Damn, I'm going to be 33 when I leave this, oh, this chair. Oh, oh. Now I just need a shave. And for sure I'm getting late tonight. <laughs> you don't have to cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like the clients. I want you checking it out though. I want you checking it out. That's why that's that's I have you right now like this, you know? You see this right here? Don't touch it until you see what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> hey, how's it going, George? How you doing? Good. 
Nice to see you, man. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> Come on. Almost getting the haircut? Yeah, man. I can't let you guys get all the honey. <laughs> Can we offer you something to drink while you wait, man? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. How you guys been? Everything's good. Good. Since we're on the topic right now of uh, being good, man, uh, we're going to be celebrating the one year anniversary of the shop this uh, coming Saturday. All right. So if you got a little bit of time, come stop by. Uh, we're going to start the celebration at 3.30. Okay. Burgers, hot dogs, and oh. some drinks. We got Coca-Cola, so like that, you know, we won't catch you uh, drinking Pepsi. <laughs> 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 you know, once we get to that million subscribers, man, we're, we're like... We'll spin the globe and then we just throw a dart wherever it fucking lands. We go. Oh damn! <laughs> hopefully, oh, yeah. it's, uh, hopefully it's not in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> hopefully it's not Salinas. <laughs> yeah, we're like what the hell? Uh, <laughs> Look at that seaside. Damn. <laughs> seaside. Uh, oh. uh, imagine oh, oh, I landed in Solidad. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are we? Let's see, I'm gonna just turn the little corner here. Thank you for watching another video of Life After the Cut. Here starring the famous barber himself, Miguel, owner of Premium Barbers. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.